We are grateful to be together. It's wonderful. And I give glory to the Lord Jesus for caring for you one by one. Jesus is caring for you one by one. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I want you to have to have that understanding that Jesus loves you and is caring for you as an individual. Amen. I am blessed. I feel I feel delighted for that. Amen. Yes. I'm so grateful. Now, I want to share briefly something, a testimony with you that will shock you. And uh, you may see it is ordinary, but it is great because we have found favor in the sight of God. I don't know whether it has been lifted up already on the need. My brethren, have you people lifted up Sister Linda's testimony on Christ's visitation to the camp? Oh, you have not yet lifted it up. Yes, it will be done. Yes. We just finished a leadership meeting uh, that was held here in the campground for four days. It was uh, a national full-time staff and coordinators meeting. And the Lord Jesus Christ came here in a marvelous way. I'm excited by that. So as I say to you, just believe it. Yes, the Lord Jesus came to the come. And God at his daughter and told, the daughter, and told her, Sister Linda, to warn the women on a kind of dressing that the women usually wear. You will, you will get the message on the net. And he said, I should be told that much emphasis should be laid on Christian dressing, that the women should keep standard. And I wish you all the time emphasize on Christian dressing. The Lord said, many people are in hell who thought they were Christians today because of their Christian dressing or because of their dressing rather, their ungodly dressing. He was very, very Ernest. Yes, you will hear it on the need, but he made some observations in the camp. He took our sister, our mommy, 
to the hostel and made her listen to conversation between two people. There were, there were two sisters. One, a child of God indeed, and the other, a child of the devil. He asked her to listen to the conversation between these two people. You will listen to it. I don't want to go in detail. Then he took her to listen to a man that was talking to was talking to someone while he thought he was talking to himself. This man was offended at the preaching. He felt that the sermon was against him. I was particularly on him. And that I directed the sermon at him. So he was offended. The man was soliloquizing, saying, Look at, where is the holiness? Why didn't he call me directly? To talk to me, he carried me to the pulpit. Where is the holiness? Where is the holiness? Uh, why? Instead of bringing me to the pulpit and be speaking to everybody to to hear, to hear, and it is me he was talking to. Why didn't he call me? So as he was talking, there was a man in the dark that was answering him. He said, yes. Actually, it was to you he was talking. Why didn't he call you? Is that holiness? It's supposed to have called you. Well, let them not think that one cannot one cannot keep himself that it's only maybe in this place you must be in holiness movement, you must be this. No. You can keep yourself. That's the man was talking to himself. He said, It's possible I can leave this place and maintain my Christian life. Instead of being where they are, they are indirectly abusing you, I can withdraw. Leave this like, and I, all I know through, I know the truth. I can guide myself through the truth and make it to heaven. Jesus said, can you hear what the man is saying? And my son did not know detail about the matter. My son was preaching. I myself knew the detail of this man. And I put my inspired word in the mouth of my son. And I was the one talking to my son, to him. Not only to him, but to all that are listening, I am applying my word to their life. Not only to those who are in this conference, but even those who shall hear the recorded message. I am the one putting this word of inspiration to locate people with this similar problem and solve it for them. To locate people who have this problem and now see him. He does not see me. He is seeing my son there. He does not see me. See what the devil is. The person answering him in the dark is Satan. 
the person that is answering him in the, in the dark side is the devil. And see the suggestion that Satan has given him. You can be alone. You can withdraw and make at least you, you have known the truth. Then Jesus said, I said, iron sharpened iron. Can iron sharpen itself? Or can iron be sharpened by wood? My, uh, our mommy asked the Lord, he said, I, I don't understand that statement. I say yes, it's a deep saying. Iron cannot sharpen itself. If this man withdraws from here, where the word of God is coming at him, instead of asking God for grace, as the word convicts him to purify him, he withdraws. I say, I can live alone. By the way, I know the truth. He is iron now that has withdrawn from the other iron. Can he sharpen itself himself? Can he? In the absence of others that the Lord is using with him, if he stays outside fellowship, I said, I know the truth. I know the way. Can he sharpen himself? Can he edify himself and say he is guiding his way to heaven? And two, if he now says he will withdraw from this place, where the truth is, where I am using people, to sharpen. I'm using you people to sharpen one another. If he withdraws to, to some of these churches that have no truth in, in them, they are like wood. Can wood sharpen iron? Can date mean a defy a living person? That if he feels offended, instead of repenting, instead of purifying himself, I will leave this place because they are, being, they are embarrassing me. And now you go to a church where God is not there. It's like wood. Then can the wood sharpen iron? Ah, I will leave the rest for you. Go to the need. Go to the need. Listen to the message tomorrow as the, our brethren shall upload it. Amen. Now, let's pray together. Almighty Father, we bless your name. Thank you so much because you are you doing, doing wonderfully. One. You are great. Thank you for the piece of information. The word of wisdom. You send unto us. May your children be edified by it. In Jesus name. Thank you father. Because of the scripture. We shall consider today. Hallelujah. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Yes. We are taking our study today from second epistle of John. We are studying Second epistle of John. Second epistle 
of John. Where that begins from verse 1 to verse 13. We shall pick them one by one. The elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth. And not I only, but also all they that have known the truth. John was writing to elect lady. This lady had taught her children well. The children were following the word of God. They were keeping the word of God. And John had the testimony of the lives of those children. And he was happy. He was happy with their mother. He was happy with the children. He loved the lady. He loved her children. Why? Because of the truth. I love in the truth. And not I only, but also all that have known the truth. They are happy with you, lady, because of your character and because of what you have done on your children. Because of what you have done on your children. You teach your children the truth. And your children are walking according to the truth. We love you. I love you. Not I only. All that love the truth. All that know the truth, all that are following the truth, love you. He said, For the truth's sake, which dwelleth in us and shall be with us forever. Who is the truth? that dwells in us. Jesus said, I am the truth. And Jesus dwells in us. And we shall be with him in the physical sense forever. He is in us now the truth because we are practicing the truth Jesus is in us now and we shall be together physically forever grace be with you mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. May you always continue to find the favor of God. 
Grace be with you. May you always receive the presence of God in your life. Grace be with you. May you always find help in your life. May the Lord always enable you in all ways and in all things. Grace be with you and peace Peace, righteousness, peace, serenity of life, tranquility of life, assurance of life. This should be yours from God the Father. And from Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. Something about Jesus Christ is clear. One, he is the truth. Two, Love flows from him. He is love. The presence of Jesus in your life will make you walk on the truth and will make you love people. It will give you, it will give you peace, the presence of Jesus. Peace because you are living in the truth, then love oozes out of you as a fragrance. You love people, you love your environment. Yes, these two things, truth, you'll be a truthful man. Love, you be a loving man. Lady, we are happy because you walk in the truth. Just imagine what Jesus Christ said. Emphasize on standard Christian dressing. Emphasize on it. Let the people learn to dress well. Let the people dress godly. I want them to live according to the standard of my world. So it's wonderful. When we find people that are walking and living in divine standard, we are happy. We are brothers. We are sisters. We love them. We accept them. We love them. That tells you, appreciate your brother that is walking in the truth. Appreciate your sister that is walking on the truth. Let it gladden your heart to find someone that is so sincere. Someone that has found Jesus in a, in a distant country. If you see somebody from your country there, what you like him. Somebody that is speaking your dialect. 
you are happy with that person. Just because he's speaking your language. So be happy with your brother that is walking in the standard of God. Be happy with your sister that is following the standard of God. He continues. I rejoiced greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth. As we, as we have received a commandment from the Father. The Father has commanded that we should walk in the truth. God has instructed us that we should follow his word. The teaching of his word. Live by it. Live by it. And when we find people that are living by the truth of God's word, it's a joyful thing. I rejoice greatly when I saw that your children are walking on the truth. They are following the standard. I rejoice greatly. Gives me joy. The question then comes, do you give attention to teach your children the truth of God? Are your children aware of divine truth? Are they following this truth? I kept on saying, make sure your children are with you hearing these messages. Train them. Train them. Make sure they are hearing these messages because God expects them to walk in the truth. See how much they are delighted by those that know the truth. Yeah. That's what God is saying. This is the commandment we have received. To live and walk in the truth. To love the truth. And to love those who live in the truth. Walk on your heart to love the, the brotherhood. Walk on your heart. Be happy that you find people that are walking on this way. Let it be a joy to you. Let it be a joy to you. Yes. And now, I beseech you, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we had from the beginning, that we love one another. I am pleading with you, lady, I'm not giving you any new commandment. But that which the Lord has instructed, that which the Lord has laid down for us, and that commandment is that we should love one another. It's a commandment. Then, always walk 
on yourself to remove from your life anything that is blocking you from loving your brother. Anything that is blocking you from loving your sister, walk on yourself. Because the commandment we have received is that we should love one another. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. He that loveth is born of God and knows God. He that loveth not knoweth not God because God is love. In this case, Satan puts various negative thoughts in our hearts to hinder this love from shining out to our brethren. He puts negative thoughts. Satan occupies us with bad events such that the heart is not shining. Those things are like the cloud that cover the sun to keep the sun from shining. They are like the cloud that covers, covers the moon to keep the moon from releasing its beautiful brightness. See how in the presence of the moon, we want the cloud to roll away so the moon should shine again. See how much your brother is waiting for that evil thought to clear up from your mind so that your love towards him should shine again. Your sister is waiting for that thought that is put in you by the devil, blocking your love, how that, that thought should be removed as a cloud covering this, the, the, the surface of the sun so that your brightness in love will cover him again. Beloved, let us love one another. Yes. And this is love that we walked after his commandments. Love is not necessarily emotional, although there are emotions of love. But Love is a lifestyle. Love is a life principle. It is a life that is lived according to the law of God. Doing to your brother what the Lord demands. Doing to your sister what the world of God says that is love. Now, take it this way. You are offended for one reason, but that offense does not mean you should not greet your brother. Your mind is having some painful thoughts because maybe towards your brother, but that does not deprive the act of love, which is greet one another with the holy keys. Despite the pain of your heart, when you see your brother, you greet him. That greeting is a commandment. And when you do it, it is an act of love. It's an act of love. 
Don't respond to your mind that is temporarily covered by a cloud of, in, of thoughts and then refuse to greet your brother. Then you're not walking in commandment of God. You're not walking in love. Something has blocked your love. What do I say? Walk in love and do not subject yourself to feelings of your life. To feelings which are pieces of clouds that will roll away. Let your heart remain a loving heart. Speak love. Act love despite the feeling of your heart. You could have had an information that this particular person said this, did this. That is just a piece of information that is covering your heart of love. Please do everything to remove it so that you love, because this is what the Lord is saying. Now, go back to the scripture from verse 1. The elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth, and not I only, but also all they that have known the truth. For the truth's sake, which dwelleth in us, and shall be with us forever. Here, the lady might refer to a church, a local church. And the children also refers to the members of the church. See, this church teaches her members the word of God. And see how the, the apostle is happy with that church to see the members practicing the word of God. Living by the word of God. He said, I was happy when I see the members walking in the world just as you have taught them. It gladdens my heart. Not only me, all those who have received this word of truth, love you. Why do we always receive this presence of Jesus? It's because of the word that we are keeping. It gladdens him. Holiness revival movement delights God's heart why not the name, but that we keep the world, we practice the world, it attracts God to us. It attracts God to us. Why the word of God is taught, the word of God is kept. The word of God is practiced. Yes. And because of the knowledge of the truth, love proceeds from our hearts towards one another. You know the truth. What truth produces is love. He is the son of God in truth and love. 
if you know the truth, something we will see in you is love. If a person comes into Christianity, he comes into truth. He gets born again by the word of God. By following the truth. Automatically, he is happy with everyone that is working on that truth. That is it. And this is law that we walked up, we walk after his commandments. This is the, I mean, this is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. You are to order yourself by this truth. Keep yourself pure in the midst of your brethren. That is what God wants. Do not criticize your brethren. That is what God has commanded. Do not speak evil of your brethren. That is what the word says. And if you walk in this way, you walk in love. And that is what God wants. Now, verse 7. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ come in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. That is a deceiver and an antichrist. Many deceivers are entered into the world. Deceivers, they remove you from the truth. They tell you another thing outside the truth. They are deceivers. They give us a different image of Jesus. Different message concerning Jesus. In the time of John, these deceivers were saying Jesus didn't come physically to the world. They tell they tell them they told the people around them, no, don't take it as they're saying that Jesus came physically. No, he didn't come physically into the world. How can God become man? No, he is not. And he said, this is a deceiver. So be careful with the doctrines that are, that are abundant in the world, but they are false doctrine. Be careful that they don't sweep you away Many deceivers have entered into the world. Many deceivers have entered into the world. And some of these deceivers can come to you, can come among us. That's why he said in verse 8, look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Be careful that no one carry you away from this truth you are established in. Be very careful. Through reading books, through listening to the word on the need, listening to things on the need, listening to preachers, anyone 
will carry you away into another gospel and be teaching something different from what you have heard and read about Jesus. If you listen to that, you are gone. And we too have lost our reward on you because we shall be rewarded by God for bringing the truth to you and for keeping you in the truth. If you turn your heart off to these people, you are now going by them. We have lost you. We have lost you and have lost our reward. That's what God is saying. Therefore, be careful. Let no man advise you away from God. Let no man advise you away from the truth. Be very careful. See this man, as I told you in the revelation, that was offended. And a man in the dark was replying him. He thought it was, his, it was coming from within his mind. He didn't know that Satan had taken occasion to speak to him. So that that personal thought, he felt that he was the one thinking through by himself. No. He was talking and Satan was replying. Be careful that Satan does not give you a persuasion out of the truth. Be careful that Satan does not persuade your heart and move you out of the way. Now, when Jesus carried her money to listen to the conversation of two people in the hostel, one was a direct agent of the devil, while the other was a child of God, a daughter of God. The revelation showed the daughter, the both were in the same room. The one was packing her clothes in the night after after program was packing some clothes in her in the box. While the other one said, "Oh, let me pray." Oh, you want to pray? Yes, I want to pray. She picked her head tie and put on her head. Then this one was this agent of the devil wanted to stop her from praying. What will I do to stop this woman from praying? Because if she goes into prayer, this room will become inconvenient for me. Then she looked for a story and was telling and began to tell the story. How do you look at the thing they taught us in this in the church today? All these things about uh, husband and wife. Well, me, I don't, I, I it's, you know, my own is not everything I take because God knows my husband is not a soft man. My husband is, uh, is a hard man. So this other lady who was to pray went into this conversation. And the conversation continued as you shall hear yourself. The conversation continued until she succeeded in putting some things into her, into her heart. And Satan, stood back with a bucket of darkness that once you, he, he, he could get this woman, believe something outside the word of God, he will pour darkness into her mind. And that was exactly what happened. 
she couldn't pray again. Then our mommy saw this lady, the, the, the agent of the devil, into two forms. One was laughing at her, you fool. I've been able to distract your attention, to remove you from praying to your God. I, I cannot allow anything. I cannot be listening to anything that would distract me from Lucifer, my Lord. But see you, fool. Go and sleep. They blew it upon her. She just, if she did not even pray again. She just let me sleep and gone. Jesus said, did you see? That is how the enemy have taken it now to walk against my children. How the enemy deceivers are gone. Now, among you are people that are deceivers. Be careful that somebody who is not in the Lord should come to carry you off by any form of distraction that your commitment to your God ceases. The Lord says, can you see, the devil has poured darkness into her, into her and it will take a much prayer to recover. But how many of my children have that time to pray? That's why they go to find themselves in hellfire and be wondering, was I not following God? Am I not serving God? What happened that I'm in hell? What you, you, you have been distracted. The agent of the devil who is not after God, who is not after heaven, who is not after righteousness has distracted your attention and you leave, you left your commitment to God and begin to pay attention to vanity. When you, when the Lord gave you a signal, my brother, you are moving, oh, my son, you are moving out of the way. Stop that thing and go for your prayer. Why didn't you listen to it? My son, this handset has taken over your time. Close it up. Go and pray. Why didn't you listen? Some things there distracted your attention. And all your commitment to Christ, as you determined, failed. Failed. And because of some things you have concentrated, concentrated to see, to watch, Satan now pours darkness into your mind. And carries you until that prayer you wanted to do, you couldn't do anymore. Those things in the, in the answer, those things you were watching, overcame you. And the devil loves fool. You live off your course of heaven. And you're watching this thing I put here to just distract attention. Move you off from target, from your goal. So, be careful for many deceivers, many articles that are deceptive have been manufactured. Many persons that are deceivers are around. That's why he said, look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought. We have done much. We have carried you for long. I can hear your testimony when the Lord brought me to holiness movement, when the Lord brought me to holiness movement, when the Lord brought me to holiness movement. But some people are walking up, walking on you to destroy the Christian virtues you got when you came in. Some pieces of clouds are covering the sun. Yeah, a 
big cloud is covering the sun. Yes. Verse 9. Whosoever transgressed and abided not in the doctrine of Christ had not God. He that abided in the doctrine of Christ, he had both the Father and the Son. Whosoever commits sin and is not following the teachings of Christ, forget about the claim in the mouth. God is not with him. He does not have God in his life. Because I told you, God is truth and love. Jesus is truth and love. If Jesus is in your life, you will live in truth. You will manifest divine love. You will live in truth. You follow the commandment. One, you will walk on yourself not to be soon angry. That's the truth. You will walk on yourself not to speak evil, even in your anger, because be ye angry and sin not. That's the truth. When people cannot follow this, God is not in them. God is not in them. If God were in you, you will show forth these two characters, walking in the world, manifesting love. Walking in the truth and exhibiting love. It's a sign that God is in your life. That's what the Bible says. Hence, if they come unto you, if they come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither beat him God's speed. Be careful of associating with people that do not have God in them. They go about, but they're deceivers. They go about as preachers, but they're deceivers. Don't yield yourself to them. Reject them outrightly. Reject them politely. Reject them wisely. Reject them even rudely too, depending on the circumstance. Say no to them. Say no, so that you don't lose this thing, and we do not lose this thing, which God is doing in our lives. For he that bideth him God's speed is partaker of his evil deeds, giving offering to people who are not preaching. The truth is, supposed, is supporting them. Supporting them in their destructive works. They're supporting them. Don't give your offering, your precious thing to any man, any preacher that is not carrying the truth. You are helping him to propagate evil. You are helping him to fight against God. Rather, support preachers of truth so that truth should be propagated, should be spread in the world. Having many things to write unto you, I would not write with paper and ink, but I trust to come unto you and speak face to face 
that our joy may be full. I see you, you see me in the Lord. Happy. God has brought us to this fellowship. God has brought us to this knowledge. God has brought us to this life. Eternal life. Wonderful. Eternal life. This is a unique life. A life lived by obeying the world. Following the world. Loving one another by the world. Is wonderful. The children of thy elect sister greet thee. Which means when you live in the truth and, and the other person live, lives in the truth, you may not be in the same congregation, not even in the same denomination, but the joy is there. You're interested in them because they are also practicing the truth over there. It gives you joy. Gives you joy. It draws your love. It draws your love. So we are grateful today for a study in Second John on practical Christianity based on truth and love. Truth and love. Practical Christianity. You have two eyes that give you full sight. One is the truth you have found in Christ. The other one is the love you express in Christ, practical Christianity. You have two ears. One ear is hears the truth in Christ, the truth of the world. The other ear is for practical Christianity, the love. The love expresses the love, gives its own attention to listening to love. The truth is love. Truth is love. Truth in your heart will manifest in love in your life. Truth in your heart will manifest in love in your life. You have two nostrils. One is truth, the other one is love, giving you balance, full breathing. The two ears, one is truth, one is love, giving you balanced hearing. Two nostrils, giving you balanced breathing. Truth and love. You have two hands swinging to give you a balanced movement. One is Law is truth. You have come to the truth in Christ. The other one expresses truth by love. It's an expression of love. Because you know the truth. If you don't manifest this love that comes from the truth of Christ, you don't have God. You don't have God. You have two feet. One is true. The other one is law. Practical Christianity. That's what is to show you belong to him. Beloved, let's love one another. A new commandment have I given to you that ye love one another. By thee shall all men know that you are my disciple, that truly you are converted. If you walk in truth and walk in love, 
truth received from God, love expressed towards your brethren, towards the, your, your environment. May the God of heaven cause your Christian life to be like this, showing forth practically that you have received the truth of Christ. You are walking on the truth of Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's Amen. Let's go before the Lord. I will love. I will love. Go before the Lord and say, make a promise. Check over your life. Have you received the truth? Do you express it? Or is it expressed in love? You need to carry your heart to the doctor. The doctor is the creator. Because mm -hmm. some, some things have blocked your heart. The mm -hmm. cloud covered your heart is staying too long. It's like sometimes in which the cloud covers the sun all through the day. People are scarcely seeing the sun because of the cloud. Little you see the sun, a little time is covered. Little time you see, a little time is covered. May God operate your heart so that it can shine out of love. Otherwise, the truth is not prospering in you. The truth is not prospering in your life because love is not shining. Tell God, operate my heart. Take away this thing that is blocking the heart from love. Take away these thoughts, these feelings that are looking perpetual and are blocking your heart from showing the truth of Christ in love. Take yourself to Jesus again. Plead with him. You must love as one that knows the truth. In the mighty name of Jesus, Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, Jesus. I <laughs> I <laughs> Thank you. 
Lay hand on your heart and sleep with God for you. God carry out divine oppression to remove those things that block love. You have been in the presence of the truth. You have been reading the word of truth, the Holy Spirit. You have been listening to messages of truth. You have read books that contain the word of truth. Why is the love not showing? Or the love not showing brightly? Why are thoughts contrary to love, blocking love, filling your heart? Almighty Father, I'm making a request today. Oh Lord, go into the hearts of your children. Amen. 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 Yes, Lord. Lord, operate them. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Those stone dwellings that block. Lord. Oh God, so this can express your love to one another to one another. Amen. All those thoughts the enemy brought, so they may not express this beautiful truth they have learned. God, clear them from their lives in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Almighty Father, do this oppression in their life. Amen. Pour your spirit into them. Amen. Amen. Their hearts be covered with love. Amen. Amen. Let the truth they have learned for express love. Mm. The environment, my dear, that we know the truth, mm. that we will rejoice mm. because we are walking in the truth and expressing your love. Mm. Make them to love the brotherhood. Mm. Make them to love as you have commanded. Let them walk in the truth. Mm. Mm. Because you have heart our world, you have heart our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hurimo is a non denominational ministry given to the propagation of God's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings conferences, and the production and spread of holiness literature and materials. Pastor Paul Ricke has been mandated to raise up this great work as the international director, an anointed teacher of holiness with divine inspiration. He is the author of over 30 Christian books and many hundreds of recorded messages that can be found on the YouTube channel. 
Connect with us on YouTube and Facebook. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide Horimo is promoting biblical truth, righteousness, and holiness. Please join us every Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time with the Zoom meeting ID 425-964-7780 or every Monday at 10 p.m. Eastern Time ID 989-988-2681. To hear the undiluted word of God from Pastor Paul Ricker, the International Director of Horimo. The address of Horimo North America is 3776 Piney Mountain Road, Walnut Cove, North Carolina, 27052. You can telephone us on 336-251-4626 or email us at horimona at gmail.com. You can also visit the website at www.horimona.org. Welcome to Holiness Revival Movement, promoting holiness and righteousness worldwide.